January the 29th, 2012 marked the 150th anniversary of the birth of the composer Frederick Delius. I met up with the cellist Julian Lloyd Webber to talk about the composer and began by asking about his new disc of transcriptions of Delius songs. This is a collection of song arrangements um, by Delius and also by John Ireland. Um, how it started was that I heard, um, I saw um, the, the, the music of a beautiful song by Delius called Birds in the High Hall Garden, um, which is from an early song cycle called Maud, five songs for tenor and orchestra. And this piece is almost completely unknown. And I was looking at the first one, at the first of the five, um, and I just couldn't believe you know, what seems to be, to me, top draw Delius, completely unknown. And so I thought the melody would arrange beautifully for, for cello and piano. Um, when I looked at the words closely and how Delius had set the words, I began to realise why nobody sung it, because the name Maud is repeated five times in a row under the second phrase. <laughs> and I mean, there are not many things there, and basically the words are quite dated. So it, as a song, it doesn't really work. But as a cello piano piece, it works absolutely beautifully. So I then um, decided, well... I, maybe I should investigate all the other Delia songs because it was an area of his music. I knew a few of them, but uh, a lot of them I, I didn't know at all. So uh, with my pianist, John Lenahan, we went through every single Delia song. Um, then I thought, OK, maybe I should look at another composer at the same time because um, we could have done a whole CD of Delia song arrangements, but I've also always had a passion for John Ireland. I, th I think he's one of the most underrated of British composers and um, I think his cello sonata is an absolute masterpiece. So I thought I'd look at his songs as well, which um, sounds simple, but in fact there's, I think, about 88. So we went through all those as well and found some absolute gems. Again, some of them not, not so well known at all. And not content to stop there, we then started looking at the part songs because my wife is a cellist and we thought um, you know, maybe we could do some, uh, some of the part, two part songs for, for two cellos. It would be nice. And in fact, we found three. Two of the John Allen ones are, are first recordings in any kind of form. And of course, the Delius Birds in the High Hall Garden is also a first recording. So basically what I was looking for were wonderful melodies that would work um that that weren't dependent on the words so that they would work in, in absolutely as cello piano pieces I thought this was going to be quite a simple job but actually when it came down to it there was a lot more arrangement than than would first meet the eye firstly I put things for the second verse either up or down an octave sometimes not Thanks always to provide the variety Just that words contrast, would have done exactly and also it it made it more of a, of a cello piano piece, really. Um, it's exactly, in a way, what Casals did with the, his arrangement of Foray's Apres and Rev. Um, he puts the, the, the beautiful theme up the second time up the octave. It's very, very effective. Um, of course, the singer would keep, keep it all in, in, that, in the same range of pitch. The other thing that I found uh, quite noticeable was you often have repeated notes, the same note, repeated to fit words in. And sometimes it just felt awkward, basically sawing away on the same note just for the sake of fitting some words in. So I found that I had to change that a little bit. Again, not in every song, but in some cases. So the arrangements became a little bit more uh, complicated than I thought they might. But as always, in a way, I tried to, to, to stay as close to what the composer wrote uh, as, as was really possible. Mm. Um, and at the same time, yeah, make make these pieces work for cello and piano. Yeah. And they do really bring out what um, what a great melodist Delius and Ireland, but but same with Delius now. Yes. What a great melodist. I he think was. it might surprise some people because I think perhaps if people are thinking of Delius, 
Melodist isn't, wouldn't be the first word that came to mind. I mean, we all know that he did write be beautiful melodies, but perhaps it's more the, the harmony and the, the kind of improvisatory quality of Delius that most people would think of, those gorgeous chromatic harmonies and, and the way his music just unfolds in this kind of continuous stream of, of beautiful music. But melody, maybe you, you don't immediately associate with that. But of course, with this song form, Delius had to keep perhaps a tighter control than usual um, of his of the actual form of the music because songs are two, three minutes long and they have to be very tightly structured in order to work. And uh, although Delius, as usual, treats um, uh, the song differently to any other composer would, I mean, the, the, an example is um, In the Garden of the Seraglio, which I think is absolutely beautiful song um and that is very typical delius in that it's just one long line just going wherever basically he wants to go and it is wonderful Of, D of Delius as a composer is that that by and large, and certainly the, the general public, the general concert goer, only ever hears and gets to know a very few pieces. In other words, on hearing the first cuckoo in spring, walk to the Paradise Garden, La Calinda crops up on, uh, around the place, but and things like Sleigh Ride, you know, it's the lighter Delius really, marvelous stuff, but. The, the the cello concerto, the the double concerto, the violin concerto. You know the, these works are, are not heard nearly as much as they should be. And another link between yourself and Delius is the instrument that you play. Well, it? it's a remarkable thing, really, because um, for the first time since I've had the instrument, and I've had it since 1983, I've been playing it since then. I'm about to play the cello concerto on the cello which gave its premiere. Um, it was written, uh, in fact, the, the concerto has a very peculiar history. It was written with Beatrice Harrison in mind, but Alexandra Barjansky, a Russian cellist who was very active in, in Europe in, in the 20s, actually gave its world premiere on, on this cello. So it's quite a, a, a thing for me, really. I think it suits the instrument because my cello has a very strong and rich A string, and so much of the concerto is is on that is on the A string, it's high, written very high, then I actually think it suits, suits the cello really well. Um, but it is quite a special feeling actually realising that this, this piece was was premiered on it and also Barjansky played both us, all, all Delius's cello music to him with Eric Fenby. Um, it's quite a link, it's the kind of mm. thing I, I rather like. The extraordinary thing is that I last played this concerto in London at the Proms in 1980. And I'm, I mean, no doubt someone might come out and prove me wrong, which I hope that they do. Um, but I don't think it's been heard in London since then, which is really kind of unfathomable for such a, a lovely, lovely piece of music. And when you think that there aren't the greatest number of cello concertos, that, that the fact it hasn't been heard for 32 years um, in London is, is quite extraordinary. And I also seem to remember that before 1980, when I played the props, no one could remember a previous London performance. Goodness. Back to the 30s or something. <laughs> that is quite quite remarkable. Um, and a great way to begin what is a Delius year. It's the 150th anniversary of his birth and um, a great opportunity for, for the people like yourselves who have long been advocates of his music and long believe his music is neglected and to really try and draw it. It's a wonderful so. opportunity for, for us Delians to, to hopefully in 2012 play some of the bigger pieces that, that really are not day-to-day -day concert fair. Let's hope we, we can do our best for them. They're not the easiest works to bring off in concert. Um, they always end quietly. There's no burst of applause at the end. And, you know, they're ferociously difficult 